In today's video, I'm going to talk about five different RTX 5080 graphics cards that I have right here. So the Founders Edition from NVIDIA, uh, the Gaming Pro OC from Palette, the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, the Supreme from MSI, and the ROG Astral from Asus. So let's see what features they have to offer, uh, how they compare to each other when it comes to gaming performance as well as thermals and noise, and which ones make the most sense to get. Let's begin. I talked a bit more about the new Founders Edition in my previous video, but if you missed it, NVIDIA's new slim design is surprisingly compact for a high-end graphics card. It is as long and as tall as the old RTX 4080, but it is only two slots thick, which will definitely help compatibility in a lot of cases. It has a dual flow-through design, uh, pushing the air out the top of the card, and as we've come to expect from NVIDIA, it is extremely well built and it has a really elegant and clean design uh, with not too many extra features like lots of RGB or a dual BIOS. The Gaming Pro OC from Palette has a slightly larger and a bit more traditional looking 3-fan design. The build quality seems very decent with a metal frame around it and a metal backplate combined with a plastic shroud around the fans. This model does have a little bit of RGB, which you can control using a regular addressable RGB cable and your motherboard software, but for the most part, it is a pretty straightforward design that will be very easy to match with a lot of motherboards and cases on the market. And even though the Gaming Pro is meant to be an entry-level model, uh, you still get a dual BIOS, some stickers on the side, and a very small mouse pad. Uh, no GPU holder, unfortunately. The Gaming OC model from Gigabyte has been around for quite a while now, and while it has the same dark grey color scheme as before, the shroud and the backblade design of this RTX 5080 are completely new, which does give this card a little bit of a different look than it had before. It is a bit larger than the palette, but it should still fit most popular ATX cases on the market easily, so it is not as extreme as some of the other models I will talk about in this video. Uh, this card does have the RGB effect behind the fans again, so it will look very nice if you decide to mount it vertically. It comes with a dual BIOS, a GPU holder, and most importantly, it offers one extra year of warranty for a total of four, which is a very nice thing to have. Then we have the Supreme SoC from MSI, and besides the fact that it looks gorgeous, it is an extremely well-built card uh, with a nice and clean design that still has enough of details to make it stand out. Technically, it can do RGB if you really wanted to, but by default, the LEDs will just shine white. Size-wise, this is a very large card, so compatibility is definitely something to consider if you decide to go for this model. And feature-wise, uh, you get a dual BIOS and a very simple GPU holder, but it will work well in a lot of cases. And last but definitely not the least, uh, the ROG Astral from ASUS. And since apparently ROG Strix cards were not large and overkill enough, ASUS decided to launch a model that is positioned above the Strix. Now I love that they went with a little bit of a less is more vibe uh, with the design, and it looks much cleaner and not too over the top except for the fact that it is huge and it weighs almost three kilograms. Now, the interesting thing about this model is that it doesn't just have a flow-through design, but they also added a fourth fan on the backplate uh, that pushes the air straight out. Uh, other than that, it has a dual BIOS and it comes with a GPU holder, as well as this cute keycap that you can use on a shift key, I would guess. Now, all these cards do have a couple of things in common as well. Uh, they all use the new 12-volt 2x6 power connector to power them up. Uh, they all come with the adapter for three regular 8-pin power supply connectors. Uh, they all have a fan stop option, so they are completely silent in idle uh, or during lighter workloads. Uh, all of them include three DisplayPort 2.1B connections and one HDMI 2.1B, uh, with only the ASUS adding a second HDMI to the mix, and none of these five models had any noticeable coil wine. 
In terms of weight, uh, they vary a lot. So the Founders Edition weighs only a bit over 1600 grams. Uh, the Palette is a little bit lighter. The Gigabyte a little bit heavier, but still pretty reasonable at just over 1800 grams. While the MSI Supreme and the RG Astral are extremely heavy, uh, weighing over 2.6 and 2.8 kilos respectively. Now that does come from much larger and really well built heat sinks that these uh, two models have, and it should make them cool better and cost more uh, but it is also a lot of weight to put on your PCIe slot so you will definitely want to make sure you use some sort of a GPU holder in your system uh, to take some weight off of your motherboard. For those of you that missed my uh, RTX 5080 review I'm just going to do a very quick summary of what you can expect from it. Uh, with an MSRP of $1000 the 5080 is clearly aimed at high resolution gaming. In 45 games we tested, it outperformed the old 4080 Super by about 15% uh, at 4K resolution, and it was faster than the Radeon 7900 XTX by about 17% at 4K. And while the RTX 5090 is much, much faster, it is also way more expensive. So realistically, at this price point, the RTX 5080 doesn't have that much competition, or at least not yet. Now, feature-wise, the new 50 series comes with DLC SS4 and multi-frame generation, which is, as I said before, uh, a very complicated topic that requires a lot of nuance, but in short, uh, it can be very useful in some games and not so useful in others. So it is an extra option that you can decide if you want to use or not, and it is available on all 50 series cards. Anyway, the official boost spec of the RTX 5080 is 2617 megahertz, uh, but in reality, all cards nowadays boost higher than their specs, so it is a pretty meaningless number, I would say. Now, boost speeds do vary a bit more depending on the game that you're playing, and these are the results from two games, so Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, Black Myth Wukong. And generally, the ROG Astral hits the highest clock speeds, but the difference between all these five models is actually not that big. Looking at memory clocks, uh, all cards report the exact same speed, so none of these cards come with overclocked memory out of the box. But that small difference in boost speeds uh, does lead to a small difference in gaming performance. Now, on average, the ROG Astral was the fastest, uh, being about 6% faster than the Founders Edition. The Gigabyte came in second at 4% of an improvement. Uh, the MSI ended up nicely in the middle, uh, with the palette just below that. So all partner cards did manage to just about outperform the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. And even though 5-6% to will be hard to notice while gaming, uh, it is a nice bonus on top of what the RTX 5080 itself brings. So you could say that a 5080 Astral is about 21% faster than a 4080 Super Founders Edition uh, at 4K resolution. But the ROG Astral also uses the most power to get that performance lead, uh, noticeably more than other four cards. The Gigabyte, for example, was on the second spot when it comes to performance, but it didn't use that much more power than the Founders Edition. And I would say that the MSI really stands out here. It uses significantly less power than the Founders Edition while outperforming it. So basically, the ROG Astral uh, increased performance compared to the Supreme by about 3% at the cost of more than 15% extra power, which is quite a lot. And there will be some sample variances between uh, these two models, but nevertheless, it just feels like ASUS is pushing the power use to make sure that they top the performance charts. And I know that overclocking is always going to be a very popular subject, uh, but with this generation, I really think it's going to be worth seeing uh, how far you can reduce the power draw without sacrificing performance instead of trying to push even more power for very small performance gains. In idle, every single one of these cards will turn off their fans completely, so they're all just as quiet when they have very little to do. And under load, none of these cards are actually loud. So the Founders Edition is technically the loudest, uh, with 39 decibels at a 50 centimeter distance, but I don't think that that amount will bother most people out there. 
The palette is a little bit quieter, but the Astral in its quiet profile uh, and the Supreme in either profile and the Gaming OC in its silent profile are all extremely quiet. Now, technically, the Astral is the quietest by a very, very small margin, but if we put the thermals next to it, it is actually the Supreme that comes out on top. Sub 60 degrees on the cores and 60-ish on the memory with barely any noise is very impressive. And those temps are lower than the Astral in its louder performance profile. So even if you account for MSI's lower power consumption, the result is still really impressive. That being said, I also think that the competition to reach the absolute lowest temperature has also gone a bit too far. Good cooling is very, very important, but it is a stretch to suggest that it actually makes a huge difference whether your uh, GPU cores hit 54 or 65 degrees. So the Supreme does win in this graph, but all of these cards have an objectively good result, and I don't think that you should worry about thermals with any of these models. Now, when it comes to dual BIOS tuning, the palette shows a small difference between the two profiles, so you can choose between a slightly quieter option or get slightly lower temperatures. I do think there is enough of a headroom for the silent profile to be a little bit quieter uh, while still showing good thermals. For the Gigabyte, uh, I would say that the silent profile is the optimal one. It is noticeably quieter, but barely warmer. And just as for palette, I do think that there is enough headroom to make it even quieter still. And the difference between the two MSI profiles is a bit small as well. Now, I would leave it in the silent profile because it is very quiet while showing fantastic temperatures. And even though there is still room to make it even quieter, there is absolutely no need to do so since it is already impossible to hear it. But I do like that ASUS at least shows a significant difference between their profiles. It is one of the few cards where you can instantly tell the difference between uh, going for lower temps and more noise or a bit higher temps and that proper silent option. Now, since the Founders Edition uh, pushes the air towards the CPU, uh, I was also looking at CPU temps. And for this test, I used the 9800X3D processor with the uh, Deep Cool Assassin 4 air cooler. And while I expected that the Founders Edition would really heat up your CPU a bit more, that actually did not happen. Now, there are some small differences between all these models, with the Supreme showing the best result, uh, followed by the Gigabyte, but these differences are not big enough to influence your decision on which one to get. But in the end, uh, which card will actually make sense to get uh, will depend on price and availability. And right now, that situation is a disaster. Uh, there are almost no cards available at all. And on top of that, uh, some retailers just decided to list uh, whatever cards they can get their hands on for ridiculous prices, uh, sometimes 50% over the MSRP or even more. And keep in mind, that is a scam and you should never spend 50% or more over the MSRP for an RTX 5080. Now, 5090 supply will probably be difficult for a bit longer, but RTX 5080 supply should realistically normalize in the coming weeks and months. And until then, please do not pre-order and do not pay these extreme amounts. Having said that, uh, some shops like Newegg in the US uh, did list some prices that are more like the recommended retail price should be, uh, even though there is no stock indication or being able to guarantee a card for that price. But even though their price is meaningless at the moment, we can at least gauge what these cards might cost when the situation uh, settles down. So, if we assume that some cards will be available in the future and those Newegg prices are MSRPs that you might actually see in shops, uh, the palette is not listed, but the Gaming Pro non-OC is an MSRP card, so our rough guess would be that the OC version should be just a bit over that. And since none of these cards are objectively bad in any way, and they're all just very capable RTX 5080s, the best value 5080 to buy would be the cheapest one that you like the looks of. So the Founders Edition or the Palette. Uh, they're both 
reasonably quiet and more than cool enough, with the palette being worth a small premium because it is just a bit cooler and a bit quieter than the Founders Edition. A $200 premium for the gaming OC is a bit higher than I hoped it would be, uh, but it does offer some extras like the RGB behind the fan, uh, it is much quieter and it comes with an extra year of warranty, so it is still worth it in my opinion. The Supreme SOC is $1,280, which is also quite expensive, but it is an extremely well-made card and it is really well-tuned. So if you can find this at some point for a price premium that feels reasonable to you, uh, it will get you one of the best 5080s on the market. Now, I'm not saying that you should spend that much on a 5080, but I do understand that some people might want to, considering the fact that the next step up, so the RTX 1590, starts at $2,000. And I would say the same applies for the ROG Astral here. Uh, it is an impressive card, and I do expect that people that are buying a card in this segment already have a brand preference. But if you put that brand preference aside, I don't think it should cost more than the Supreme, and it definitely should not cost $1,500. Because if you can afford spending an extra $500 on a premium 5080, you can probably squeeze in a bit more and get a 5090 that will be almost 50% faster. Again, assuming that you can get either one of these. Now, given the situation at the moment, this is all just guessing, uh, but looking at what happened with some of the previous launches, uh, prices and availability will hopefully change over the coming months. So as always, uh, I hope this video will be helpful then, even though it is not so helpful at the moment. Uh, now that's all I had for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve, an ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times, and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, Corsair has you covered with a three-year-long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and for staying to the end of this video. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.